Hello all and welcome back to episode 32. That may or may not have been a longer silence than was necessary because I need to go look and check what our last episode was <laughs> of the Lair of Lore. I'm Steven. And I'm Miriam. And we're here to talk about Battle Bond, which yes. is like the most aggressively us set that I think has come out in a while. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I don't know if either of us is actually going to be able to play it on release, but... Uh, I know Alex and I may talked about possibly going to a pre-release next weekend for I it, don't but think there... we never set anything in stone. There, Because it's a multiplayer set, there is no pre-release. It's just like the release event. They're kind of doing, they're doing something at EG, but Alex wasn't quite sure what it was. It's it's usually just it. like a, a, the actual release event. Yeah. Um, cause they Could do be quite fun. They usually do one of these like early summer multiplayer products a year. Mm -hmm. And usually stores will put on at least one event when they release. And if it's popular enough, try and put on more throughout yeah. the summer, but we'll see about that. But yeah, basically it's a multiplayer focused set, which we're all on board with. Mm hmm. Just instead of uh, being draft matters like the past couple or commander, it's two headed giant, which hasn't really seen a whole lot of love since I'm going to have to look this up because I don't remember when uh, Gatewatch came out and it barely oh, had it, it technically had some two headed giant mechanics. I yeah, huh? Uh, 2016. Uh, no, that's Oath of the Gate Watch. Never yeah, that's the one I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah, it came out in yeah, January so... 22 of 2016. So just yes. barely in 2016. So it's been yeah. two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this set is very much a two-headed giant. It is all two-headed giant, and it's actually pretty cool. It definitely looks like it would be fun to play. Um, so. so a couple of things that they have done is, one, they've changed the way that that uh, the mechanic that they originally came up with for... I just realized that that card is still showing that we were talking about in the pre-show. Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they, they instituted a mechanic for... Uh, Commander 2017, I think? Called Partner. Wherein there were a whole bunch of different uh, creatures with Partner. And you could have two of them together and they together became a Partner. Um, mm -hmm. and you could mix and match them however you wanted to get whatever color combination you wanted. In this case, we've got creatures in this set who have partner with, and then and explicitly called out name. So in all of those cases, <laughs> they can only be partnered with that creature. And they have yes. said that this functions similarly to the previously established version of partner, which is to say you can use two partners together as a commander. So that's nice. pretty awesome. So you're not kind of humped if you pick, if you want to do both of them. Mm -hmm. However, it does mean that you can't say grab Regna the Redeemer and try and partner her with Sylvia Brightspear. They have to be no. partnered with the ones who are specifically called out in their card. Yes. So um, I'm just running through the mechanics real quick. Sorry. Yeah. The other thing is assist, which is basically just another mechanic to help you deal with the fact that it's multiplayer magic you're not going to get uh, in any sort of, like, tournament or, I guess, like, more stringent uh, gameplay setting. It's not going to be best two out of three. It's two out of giant, so it's just going to be one match. Um, so to help combat the uh, land, flood, or screw, uh, they've also added a mechanic called... Uh, assist, wherein your partner can pay for a certain amount of the mana on a given card. So. Nice. Yeah. That'll um, everything, be very helpful. Yeah, I think pretty much everything else is sort of returning mechanics, so we're pretty mm -hmm. much going to jump right in. There are a couple of cards that we won't be touching on, either because they're reprints, or just because they're fine and we don't care that much, but we, still. We, we don't need to talk about them. Yeah, we like, don't need that's... to talk about them. There are yeah. a few that we're just going to be like, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> we're sure, but first, we're going to be starting off with all of the partner cards. Some of these are going to be like random commons and uncommons. Actually, I think they're all uncommons. I don't know if any of them are commons. But still, they're all pretty sweet. Also, I gotta say, a fair few of them were spoiled in really in interesting ways, so if there are any that I know that about, I will call them out after we're done. After Sweet. we're, like, done reading them over. 
So do you want to start with okay. uh, the very first one up in white? Sure. So uh, Regna the Redeemer for five generic and white. The, uh, she is a legendary creature angel for four, four. Uh, so you have to partner Regna the Redeemer with Krav the Unredeemed. Um, and so this is going to be literally the same for every partner. Uh, when this creature enters the battlefield, target player may put Krav into their hand from their library, then shuffle. So Regna has flying, and at the beginning of each end step, if your team gained life this turn, create two 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens. Always useful. Very. All right, and then Regna the Redeemer gets paired with Krav the Unredeemed. Yes. For Sorry, I've got... Wow, oh, I thought we were doing, like, you would read the first one, I would read the second one. Oh, I totally misunderstood then. Then go ahead. This makes it so much easier. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to do this the easy way. <laughs> this makes it so much easier. Oh, my God. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Krav the Unredeemed is partnered with... Uh, Regna the Redeemer. Sorry, I'm also trying to set up an overlay thing on the fly because I'm smart like that. Um, for four generic and a black, he is a rare legendary creature demon. He's a 3-3 with pay a black, sacrifice X creatures, target player draws X cards, gains X life, and puts X plus one plus one counters on Krav the Unredeemed. So I basically like... I mean, at the very least... She's going to be giving you two one ones, so you can sacrifice one of them constantly to be gaining a life and making him a little bit bigger all the time. Yep. And if you gain life, you then also have your nice like little spread of white warriors. Yeah. Your little, your nice little uh, one ones. I don't think we actually mentioned what the um, the special version of their partner does, which is when this creature enters the battlefield, target player, so you can target yourself, or if they're in your allies deck. You can target your other head, uh, may put the, so if, uh, Krav enters the battlefield, you can go search up a Renga from your deck or your allies deck, or I guess your opponent's deck if you wanted to, uh, mm -hmm. and put it into their hand from their library, then shuffle the deck. Yes. Okay. So moving on to the next one, uh, Sylvia Bright Spear for two generic and a white. Uh, legendary creature, Human Knight for 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Sylvia, Sylvia partners with Corvath Bright Flame. Uh, Sylvia has double strike, and dragons your team control have double strike. Um, Hang on, sorry. I, the thing I'm trying to do is not working as well, so I was hoping it would. Uh, no, that doesn't... Okay. Okay, does this one work? Uh... Okay, if I rename this, will it actually change names? No. Ah! I'm trying to set it up so that I've got both cards up at the same time. Okay, what was his name? Bright Flame? Uh, Corvath Bright Flame. There's Bright Flame. Okay. Um, well then, while I'm doing Corvath Bright Flame... Do you think the next one's a set of uncommons? Do you think you can do both of those while I get this yeah. set up and fixed? Okay. Sounds so good. Corvath Bright Flame. Partner with Sylvia Bright Flame. He's uh, for five generic and a red. He is a legendary creature dragon. He's a three four with flying and haste. And knights, your team controls, have flying and haste. It's nice to see knights and dragons putting aside their old animosity. <laughs> Especially I mean, since, if you're... like, functionally, this means that ev both of them, if they're both out, have double strike flying in haste. That's wonderful. Exactly. It's kind of it's kind of awesome. I, I um, also just like that her way of having double strike is just I have two swords. Yeah, that that'll that'll do it then. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the next uh, pair is blaring recruiter. For three generic and a white, this is an elf warrior uh, for 2-2. Two, two. So it partners with Blaring Captain. Uh, so f you can pay two generic and a white and create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token. And then Blaring Recruiter is paired with Blaring Captain, uh, which is three generic and a black, and it is an Azra warrior for 2-2. Two, two. So this is kind of like that new race that we're seeing. Oh, yeah, uh, we forgot to mention that, actually. Yeah. 
Well, now's a good time to mention it. Uh, essentially, there's a new race that we see quite a bit of in the set, the Azra, and they're kind of like tieflings. They're they, pretty much tieflings. They are tieflings. They just are yeah. tieflings. Yeah. Uh, so whenever Blaring Captain attacks, attacking warriors get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. And it should be said that the recruiter is a warrior. Yes. So it works together and uh, creates a warrior. Oh. You have the ability to create a warrior with blaring recruiter. Recruiter. Yeah. Wow. Ours are hard today. Apparently. Um, we are not good to... at this game. Then. No. Uh, so the next one is Proud Mentor for two generic and a white. And that is uh a one one creature human warrior and it is paired with uh impetuous protege so proud mentor uh for one mana you can tap a target creature or one mana and then tap you can tap a target creature and then let me find impetuous i got it i got it okay um except there we go this one uh impetuous protege for Two and a red. He is a creature human warrior, partner with Proud Mentor. Whenever Impetuous Protege attacks, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the greatest power amongst uh, among tapped creatures your opponents control. He's a zero four. Hmm. That's very weird. Agreed. That's very, very weird. I mean it's not bad, but it's weird. Yeah. So let's see. Are there any other cards in white that you were, like, super, super excited about? Well, there's one really obvious one, which is that, holy shit, there's a blue Aetherling. Or a white Aetherling, sorry. All of the Aether, or the Ling variants have been in blue. Mm -hmm. Which is Brightling! So, it is one and two white for a creature shapeshifter. It's a 3-3. Three, three. You can pay a white... Brightling gains Vigilance until end of turn. You can pay a white. Brightling gains Lifelink until end of turn. Pay a white to return Brightling to its owner's hand. And pay a generic. Brightling gets plus one, minus one, or minus one, plus one until end of turn. Hmm. Just for some reason, this has always been a blue thing. They inevitably sort of warp whatever format they appear in. But since this isn't standard, it should be totally fine. Probably. It's just cool. Nice. Um, I mean, is there anything, I mean, these next, like, several all in white are all new for this set, if any of these are sort of an interesting to I you. I mean, I just like the art for Dwarven Lightsmith. Okay. Um, which has assists. So, Dwarven Lightsmith is a, uh, five, gen for five generic and a white, is a Dwarf Cleric for three, four, and it has assist. So, when Dwarven Lightsmith enters the battlefield, creatures your team controls get plus one, plus one until end of turn. And he's a 3-4. So that's actually, that's helpful. Yeah, and I like that he's yeah. got assists so your uh, teammate can pay for... So I guess the, the the ruling on assist is that they can't pay for the colored portion, but they can pay for the anything generic. else. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. So before we get too much deeper into this, I guess we kind of forgot to really talk about what little we know about this plane. Yeah. Um, which... I know nothing! So yeah. this one light is on Steven. Um, and I need to go find the article that had the name because I can't remember the name because it's very random and I appear to have scrolled past wherever the name was. Hmm. 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 There we go. This is the plane of Kylem. Uh, once again, it's an entirely new plane set up for this multiplayer specific set. Uh, the cards that are new to this set are pretty much all taking place within the Stadium of Valor's Reach, which mm. is basically a Colosseum. Um, the intriguing thing about this, which I guess is sort of the way that we managed to get characters like uh, Peer into the event, is that all of the combat that goes on in Valor's Reach is non-lethal. It's basically wrestling. It's, it's, it's basically wrestling. <laughs> It, you know, it kind of makes me, it's like a little bit gladi gladiator, gladi ugh, balls. It I is, but the, the thing is that um, apparently a lot of the ways that people 
there are there are team so one not all of the combat is team based but apparently that's the most popular combat mm -hmm. um the way that teams like do really well is usually by getting really popular they don't actually need to win that much they just need to yeah. get pop it it's wrestling it's sports entertainment <laughs> rather than sports yes it's wrestling also, we totally forgot that it's sort of implied, though there's no s real good story for this yet, that uh, Regna the Redeemer and uh, Krav. Krav the Unredeemed are also, like, a, in a relationship. Like, they're not well, actually, like, for none of them are forced to partner with each other. They're doing that of their own will, and I don't know where, but I have heard things about there being cards that specifically call out them being like in a relationship oh actually <clears throat> i see two cards that are like that right now just okay. right in front of me um because i noticed that right before you started talking about it so the card bring down which is a white <coughs> sorcery um the flavor text big wicked and not too smart poor thing never stood a chance against us deer <clears throat> which deer can be like just i use deer for people yeah um but then in Regna's Sanction, which is literally right below it in the next row down. Do you want to read uh, what the so card then, does first? Yes. Sorry. Uh, bring down. So let me jump back up again. So bring down <laughs> is three generic and a white. Uh, it's a sorcery with assist. Uh, so another player can pay up to three generic of the spell's cost. Destroy a target creature with power four or greater. Oh, yeah. This one's much more Good. obvious. Uh, Regna's Sanction yeah. <clears throat> for three generic and a white. It's a rare sorcery. For each player, choose friend or foe. Right, I've heard of this one. Uh, each friend puts a plus one, plus one counter on each creature they control. Holy cow. Each foe chooses one untapped creature they control, then taps the rest. Show them the light, my love. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah, that's literally like... <clears throat> I saw that and I was like, oh, that seems awful affectionate. Yeah. So basic thing is that, one, yeah, a lot of the partners have some sort of relationship with each other. Um... But in a lot of cases, it's just, like, they are they have interesting mechanics that work well together. <clears throat> like I said, though, um, it's basically wrestling. Like, apparently, I think we've heard a thing about Renga and uh, Krav being relatively popular, because, holy cow, it's an angel and a demon. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, basic idea is that they're trying to win their combats as well as make the crowd like them more, because that's how you make money. <laughs> I also just found Gideon in one of the cards. Yeah, that's probably a reprint. Yeah. Like, almost huh. assuredly. Definitely. I mean... Um, oh, I was wrong! There's one dinosaur! It's the worst one! Raptor <clears throat> Companion! Yeah! Aww. Sorry, I was really annoyed because down in green there's at least one creature that I'm like, this is a new one and it looks like a dinosaur. Why isn't it a dinosaur? There was literally, I was like, oh, it looks like we've got a bunch of dragons, but then no dinosaurs, and Steven was not very happy about I that. I was not. I'm, okay, like, honestly, I'm kind of happy that Brawl is sort of a thing, mostly because I want it to come to Magic Arena, because it's the only place that I still actively play a lot of Magic now, and I want to play a dinosaur Brawl deck so badly. <laughs> so badly. I don't have either of the legends that would be the commander yet, but I have mythic uh, wild cards just sitting there going like, these cards aren't actually good in the weird warped ass version of standard that exists here. But, 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 if they put in Brawl, then it would be amazing. So that reminds me. Uh... Uh, sorry, I, this is entirely unrelated. I'm trying to remember if, uh, mm, what? If, uh, Matt, if, uh, the, 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 what's it called? <sighs> Kaladesh is ever coming to Arena because Joey claimed that it was, and I don't think he's correct. Okay, it doesn't look like it is. Good. Sorry, I just wanted to check and make sure on that because it was on my head now, and if I don't check now, I will forget. <clears throat> you should uh, also look at the card together forever. Oh, okay. Do you want to read this one? Uh, so it's just it's because of the card art that I'm like, oh I wait, mean, this yeah. literally just like I mean so that, together forever. That I, in my defense, that one could also just be like we are literally trapped together forever because yeah. angel and demon. Uh together forever. So for 
two white. This is an enchantment. So together forever enters the battlefield support two. So you can put a plus one one counter on uh, on each of up to two target creatures. Uh, and then pay one to target creature with a counter on it. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. If I remember correctly, support was the old mechanic, f or no, support was the weird time rewritten mechanic for um, the Obzon and the Dromoka Brood, because their first mechanic didn't exactly have great legs, mm -hmm. but support didn't work super well. <clears throat> In Obzon, but it looks like it'll work a lot better here. Okay. Um, especially since you're working with a partner, so if you don't have enough dudes, you can spread them out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is also another, like, glaring call out to, okay, apparently they're totally just dating. That's cool. Or I guess yeah. married, if it's forever? Sure. They are, in a, they are together. Let's they're also that way. both immortal, so that's kind of a commitment. <laughs> That is a lot of commitment right there. Okay, I'm going to pick one just because it looks adorable and I think it's silly. Because what? apparently the cheerleaders for this are homunculi. Oh, jubilant mascot! Yeah, jubilant mascot yeah. for two generic and a white. It's a creature homunculus. It's a 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay three generic and a blue. If you do, support two. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. The competition is one is but one aspect of the spectacle. Isn't it? It's so cute. It's like, it's got its little ribbon dancer. Its things. entire head is a single terrifying eyeball. It's, it's adorable. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I totally noticed that too. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, personally, I find it deeply disturbing, but yeah. <laughs> um, Anything else in white do you think needs our attention i mean we already established that for the hateful human beings out there land tax got reprinted you <laughs> monsters <laughs> don't play land tax they might punch you i'm not the kidding art, we both like the art on this oh, one better though yeah the uh fine we're talking about this enough that you should read it yes the art on land on the new land tax is way better than the old land tax fight me i don't care so land tax for one way. This is an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for up to three basic land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Nice. Basically, if you're going to be a dick, have the mana to back it up. <laughs> sure. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> um, looks like pretty much all the rest of white that we have right now is all reprints. Yeah. Um, hey, they're reprinting, uh, Swords to Plowshares, which is an amazing removal card at the very least. So, I think this Ooh. one's been reprinted at times at Mythic, but I think when it was reprinted at Mythic, it was in, um, uh, promo sets. So nice. we've got, for one white, exile target creature, its controller gains life equal to its power. It's just an amazing removal card in white. Like, it's mm -hmm. just great. Oh, good. So you know who's up next? Uh, the twins? The first blonde planeswalkers. Not actually joking. They really are the first ones. I did not know that. Yep. So do you want to take the first one and I'll go find the other one? Sure. So this is Will Kenrith. So this uh, Will is four generic and two blue and starts with four loyalty. Uh, so for plus two, until your next turn, up to two target creatures each have base power and toughness zero three and lose all abilities. Uh, for minus two, target player draws two cards. Until your next turn, instant sorcery and planeswalker spells that player casts cost minus two less to cast. And then at minus eight, target player gets an emblem with Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Ooh. Mm. That's kind of cool. So Will Kenrith partners with Rowan Kenrith, and Will Kenrith can be your commander. That's, that last part is mostly just there for, like, yeah, uh, actual commander, because uh, Brawl... I don't. We haven't actually talked about Brawl that much, but Brawl has the special ruling wherein... Because they're, it's a uh, standard, and they're by default a 
great deal fewer legendary creatures. Mm -hmm. Planeswalkers can also be your commander. Yeah. Uh, Rowan Kendrith, or Kenrith, sorry, I keep adding a D. Uh, For four generic and two red, she's a legendary Planeswalker. Rowan comes in with four loyalty as well. Actually, all of her abilities cost the same, so that's kind of cool. For plus two, uh, during target player's next turn, each creature that player controls attacks if able. Just hit me! Hit me! (laughs) Or hit that dude who I'm standing in front of. Yes. Uh, Minus two, Rowan uh, Kenrith deals three damage to each tapped creature target player controls. And doesn't... Sorry, didn't Will have a thing about tapping things? Um... No, he didn't. I'm lying. Okay. Um... Minus eight, target player gets an emblem with whenever you activate an ability that isn't a mana ability, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Ooh, okay, that bottom one is actually really, really good. Ah, the twins, I think, will be very, very awesome to play with. I don't think they have any, like, broken abilities, but but it is pretty nice. Yeah. Even, like, even if they're not broken abilities, having, like, solid abilities are... It's nice. Yeah, her. I love that. So the issue is that usually there's the established a planeswalker needs to be able to protect themselves to be really useful. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Rowan has the downside of her uh, bonus being basically, hey, you should probably come hit me. But I guess if she survives combat, her <laughs> minus two can be effectively a board wipe. And yeah. with Will, like, he can very easily sort of start screwing with your opponent's creatures yeah he can screw with opponent's creatures and then i really like his um so let's say you have a really good instant like if you have like um what is it uh if you want like let's say you want to use sword to plowshares and you've got if you're will. about to say that minus eight remember that you should never it's, assume it's you hard will, to get up to yeah you minus will eight. assume that you never get the limit break yeah it yeah. just that would be like a really great combo yeah but um, um and also yeah. like the ability to like cat to um lower the cost of instants and sorceries. Yeah, oh, that and is pretty nice. Spells, so that's helpful. Yeah, so pretty much everything but like creatures and enchantments. Yeah, he's not good at creatures or enchantments. Got it. No. Um. Uh, then do you want to take that one I can't pronounce? I'm gonna go for it. Okay, I wish uh, you the best this... of luck. Oh, thank thank you very much. This is Zinderspult. I don't That's understand cool. why homunculus hate having vowels in their names. Because they only have one eye? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was like, that just is like, well, they only have one eye. Maybe they have an aversion to vowels then. <laughs> more eyes mean more vowels. Um, I don't think that's how that works at all. No. <laughs> But that was a terrible pun. Yes, you tried. Congratulations. Um, I tried. I'm I'm tired. Um, so this is Zin, Zinderspult. Eye of Wisdom. Uh, for four generic and a blue, this is a legendary creature, a homunculus. For one, uh, that is a one four. So Zinderspult is partnered with Okan, Eye of Chaos. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, draw a card. Huh. Sweet. Okay, that's cool. Whenever yeah. a player wins a coin flip, draw a card. Huh. Wait. Ooh. Oh, wait. It doesn't have to just be you. Wait. I just like that it's at the beginning of your combat, on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. So if you're really good at guessing, it's just like flip, flip, flip. Flip. Card. Card. Lux. Card. Just yelling luck sack. Uh, on the other side, we've got <laughs> Okan, Eye of Chaos. For four and a red, he is a legendary creature, Cyclops Berserker, because both of them can only have one eye, apparently. Yes. He is a 3-3, three, three, partners with Zindersplit. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. <laughs> so, same thing. Whenever a player wins a coin flip... Double Ocone's power and toughness until end of turn. What? I believe if you have both of them out, that means you basically resolve one of their triggered abilities in beginning of combat, 
start flipping a coin, then you do the other one. What? Yeah. Okay, these are hilarious. I love them. Like what? this is this is the kind of dumb red blue deck that I would play. Of course it would. Not like this Will and Rowan one that actually sounds totally effective. Yeah. Just this one where it's just like like these are the commanders that I wanted for the red blue commander deck I made previously. It was just like I have every coin flip card that I could find in this deck because <laughs> I don't want to win. I just want the game to like devolve into madness. Yes, that is how you like to play. It's not actually how I like to play. That was just that one deck. Yeah. Um, do you want to take Toothy? Sure. This is Toothy, imaginary friend. So for three generic and a blue, this is a legendary creature illusion. For one, that is a 1-1. One, one. Partner with Peer, imaginative rascal. So whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Toothy, imaginary friend. When Toothy leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each plus one, plus one counter on it. Do you have to have that, like, emphasis on Toothy? Uh, yes. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of it, if nothing else. It is a, it is a mouth. Yes, but you're doing an emphasis that's just like, Toothy. Toothy. Yeah, that's weird. That's not normal. Why. <laughs> Since when have we established any indicator that I might fall into the into normal okay it's deeply strange <laughs> fine i just you see this tiny little boy with a big old smile and then this maw of teeth it's also hugging him yes it's cuddling <laughs> it likes cuddles too <laughs> i'm sorry did you finish reading all of his abilities i missed i did okay. i did it just it's it's a ridiculous card and it makes me laugh and we've got Pierre, imaginative rascal, who I will point out is wearing, like, WoW or War Warhammer-style massive shoulder pad for no reason. Except that I think in this case it's actually just he's taken someone else's uh, shoulder pad. Like, he's just taken an adult's shoulder pad, so it looks massive on him. He's for, a little rascal. Yeah, for two generic it's... and a green, he is a 1-1. One, one. If one or more permanents would be put on... Wait, if one or more counters would be put on a permanent, your team controls... So, you know, like any of those times a Toothy gives himself plus one, plus one counters. That many plus one. Uh, sorry, put that many plus one on to, of each of those kind of counters are put onto the permanent instead. Hmm. Yeah. So this is probably going to end up being like, like they would be really good commanders for like a Simic plus one, plus one counter deck. Yeah. Also, just because we should probably talk about it as well. Holy cow, they're reprinting doubling season in this. However, as it should be, it's a mythic. Because doubling season was a mistake. It wasn't actually a mistake. It was more that it was printed before Planeswalkers existed. But uh, doubling season. For four generic and a green, if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control it puts twice that many on the of counters on, on that permanent instead which hmm. includes loyalty counters because it doesn't <clears throat> call them out sweet yeah it it was a mistake it's also a very very expensive card now fair enough i can see why yeah um all right so we've got one Dougie. more partner okay to be uh, we have two more actually well, I knew we had one more. Oh, right. Okay. These are the two that I actually know the stories about their announcement. So yes. this first one uh, was announced by... Well, okay. I need to actually... How about this? I will read the thing that uh, Shockroom Retriever pairs with. Mm -hmm. And then I can start telling this story. Okay. Once you're doing Shockroom Retriever. Okay. So... so sh well, no, no. I'm going to do Slinger first. Okay. So, Chakram Slinger, for four generic and a red, is a creature human warrior. It's a 2-4. Partner with Chakram Retriever. Pay a red and tap. Chakram Slinger deals two damage to target player or planeswalker. This card was spoiled by uh, Brian Kibler on his Twitter. Hmm. If you want to do the re receiver or retriever. Okay. So, Chakram Retriever is four generic and a blue. 
uh, 2-4 Elemental Hound. So it partners with Chakram Slinger. Whenever you cast a spell during your turn, untap target creature. Chakram Retriever was uh, spoiled by Brian Kibler's dog on its Instagram. What? That's kind of cool. Yeah. Just, I don't know. <laughs> that was just silly. That um, is silly. The next ones were, I be- were I don't remember who spoiled which one, but uh, Lore Weaver and uh, Lay Weaver were spoiled on Twitter by Graham and Kathleen of Loading Ready Run. Let me see if I can oh, actually go. Cool. Those tweets I think I can still maybe find. Just because Graham's on road quest, so he hasn't actually been tweeting all that much, so it won't be lost forever by this point. Oh, yeah, here we go, because they were actually, like, uh, tweeted... Wow, these were tweeted five days ago. Um, yeah, cause, <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, it was just like, hey, Kathleen... Uh, Wizard sent me a battle bond card to preview. Looks pretty sweet and cool. What do you think, partner? It shows off the lay weaver. Her response being, "My battle bond preview is way better." Here's my lore weaver. Nice. Um, I've got lay weaver up. If you want to start talking about that or lore weaver up, while well, I go find lay weaver. Sure. So lore weaver is three generic and a blue. Uh, it is a human wizard for two two. It partners with lay weaver. So for five generic and two blue, target player draws two cards. And then Lay Weaver for three generic and a green is a human druid for it's a two two partner with Lore Weaver, untap two target lands. Just for a tap. Hmm. It's actually okay. pretty sweet. Yeah. Nice. They don't particularly interact with each other, but it seems like the uncommon ones don't need to. Yeah. Um Whoa. I think the next one is also a new card, if you want to cover that one. Uh, sure. So this is Arcane Artisan. Uh, this is two generic and a blue, a human wizard for zero three. So you can, for two generic and a blue, uh, target cr- and uh, tap and then target creature, or excuse me, target player draws a card, then exiles a card from their hand. If a creature's card is exiled that way, uh, this player creates a token that is a copy of that card. When Arcane Artisan leaves the battlefield, exile all tokens created with it at the beginning of next end step. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, next one I was going to throw up is mostly just because it's silly. Um, Go for it. And refers back to my, this plane is literally just wrestling. Um, out of okay. bounds. I don't. Like, I was hoping you yeah, would. I, I was hoping. You yeah. Would. Again, I don't actually like counter spells. In fact, it's part of what makes me not like playing magic half the time is counter spells being a thing. But for three generic and a blue, it's an instant with assist, so another player can pay up. Oh my goodness! It says another player. Your opponents can choose to help you. Oh my god! This is amazing. I didn't <laughs> realize that part. This might actually be a totally usable commander card. Or brawl. Oh, goodness. Uh, please assume if I'm ever saying commander... Oh, wait. This can't be played in brawl. I'm lying. Ignore me. Because brawl has to be standard. <laughs> um, counter target spell. It just has assist. That's beautiful. I love it. It's also just homunculuses. The wardens watch for illegal tactics and protect spectators from the occasional rogue fireball. Nice. Yeah. They are the referees and the cheerleaders. Yup. Um, also, that kind of plays into a little bit about this. Uh, Zinder Spultz Judgment. Oh, okay. Give you a second to find that one. Nope, I got um, it. I'm just throwing okay. it up on the overlay. So, for four generic and a blue, this is a sorcery. For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend creates a token that's a copy of a creature they control. Each foe returns a creature they control to its owner's hand. Zinder Spult retired from officiating when she teamed up with Ocon, but she still knows the penalties better than anyone else. Oh, I would not have guessed that homunculuses had genders, if I'm honest. I would not have either. I mean, by definition, they're created life forms, but I guess you could create them with genders. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sounds like she's terrible to play against because she knows all the ways to get around the rules. 
I was guessing more it's just that she's actually a rules lawyer, so, like, those people you hate playing D&D &D <laughs> with. Oh, God, I hate those people. They're not yeah. fun to play with. Um, so up next, we've... This is actually a little bit back, but I think it's just silly. Soaring show off for two generic and a blue. It's a common bird warrior. It's a 2 2 flying whenever Soaring Show Off enters the battlefield. Each player draws a card because it's just throwing stuff into the crowd. Like, hey guys, love me because I'm a peacock. Some, specta <laughs> some spectators love an underdog, but some others are just happy to support a proven winner or, you know, one who's going to throw out stuff to the audience. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, anything else? I mean, I, I personally like just the silliness of kite sail corsair just the art of it isn't that yeah that's actually like a relatively recent card though because that one's yeah. from uh Ixalan, it's from I thought. it's from no. ixalan or rivals i just don't remember which one yeah it just it's one of those silly silly arts that makes me smile <laughs> sorry i'm doing the like i'm having issues with the scrolling again no worries um curse you windows update this wasn't a windows update this has been happening since windows 10 Oh, here's one that we have to talk about just because Which one? Um, I it it's the very second to last one. True name oh, nemesis. Yeah. <clears throat> because this card is broken because they one, they printed it in a commander set, which meant that the one commander box that this was from was insanely expensive because this became oh a legacy staple, which means you need four of them. I just read it. Yeah. What? So for one and two blue, true name nemesis, is a merfolk rogue. It's a 3-1, which seems kind of expensive for a mythic. And yeah, and then it takes like one damage to die. But true name nemesis, uh, as true name nemesis enters the battlefield, choose a player. True name nemesis has protection from the chosen player, which means this creature can't be blocked, targeted, dealt damage, or or enchanted by anything controlled by that player. What? Mercifully, in one, the set that it was created for, Commander, and here, that's actually not that big a deal because you can't, you don't pick a team, you pick an opponent. The other one can still destroy it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's a little bit more fair here than it was anywhere else, I guess. That's still just a smidgen broken. Oh, massive. Like I said, it was a legacy staple. It made a 30-something dollar commander deck cost 100 and something dollars because they oh. wanted to buy four boxes of it so they could get four copies of it because they needed a playset. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, uh, I guess moving on to black? Yep. Which and is let's see. where most of the Azra are. Okay, we can skip Krav the Unredeemed because we, we can, but the one Krav. next to him is next. Yes, Virtus the Veiled. This is a legendary creature, an Azra assassin. Uh, can we Virtus just say tiefling? is paired. What? Can we just say tiefling? Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. Like, I'm actively well, being antagonistic now. Well. There... It is an Azra. There's probably some sort of minor thing that separates them from being tieflings. But... Because they are all purple. That is the only thing yes. that separates them. <laughs> they are purple. Yeah. Uh, so, Virtus the Veiled is par is partnered with, wow, words say, Gorm the Great. Uh, so, Virtus the Veiled is, has, is a 1-1 one -one with Death Touch. Whenever Virtus the Veiled deals combat damage to a player, oh, that player loses half their life rounded up. So it's basically, you don't want to be hit by him. You also really don't want to block because he'll kill whatever you block with. Yep. Meanwhile, Grom the Great ha is uh, for three generic and a green. He's a 2-7. Gorm, 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 Gorm sorry, yeah. Uh, is a 2-7 with Vigilance. Wow, two seven for four with vigilant. That's really good. Gorm the Great must be blocked if able, and Gorm must be blocked by two or more creatures if able. <laughs> Functionally, he menace. has menace, but it's basically just <clears throat> yeah, no, 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 no. You don't get to block uh, Virtus. I'm just gonna hit you, 
and Pretty much. you are gonna hit you're gonna block me as much as you can and then Virtus is just gonna stab you and take away half your life yep you can't really win against us yeah i mean you can if you have god forbid a third creature but yeah you can't it's not allowed it's like hello frying pan <laughs> hello fire uh looks like the next one is the soul blade corruptor if you want to take yes. that one while i go find the soul whatever it's part soul blade renewer actually okay. this is the last pair that we haven't talked about in black yeah okay um so soul blade corruptor for four generic and a black is a three three human warrior. Uh, partners with Soul Blade Renewer. It has Death Touch. Whenever a creature with plus one plus one counter on it attacks one of your opponents, that creature gains Death Touch until end of turn. Nice. Yeah. The Soul Blade Renewer, on the other hand, for four generic and a green, partner with Soul Blade Corruptor. It's a two two elf warrior. Uh, whenever Soul Braid Renewer enters the battlefield, support two. So, give both of them plus one, plus one. And now they have Death Touch? Or that just works. give out some other, give other things plus one, plus one counters so that they have Death Touch when you need them to have it? It's like you get Death Touch and you get Death Touch. We all get Death Touch. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Do you want to take the Archfiend? <laughs> sure. So, Archfiend of Despair. For six generic and two black, this is a six-six demon. Uh, it's got flying. Uh, your opponents can't gain life at the beginning of each end step. Each opponent loses life equal to the damage, uh, equal to the life that player lost this turn. Ooh, hmm. that's pretty cool. That's kind of nasty. Okay, I'm gonna take another one that I think is just silly, mostly because of the name and the art. <clears throat> Go for it. I like how you keep getting all these, like, powerful mythics, I'm just like, I like this card, it's dumb and silly. Fan- I hope you're going- <laughs> hmm? Yes! Fan Good. favorite! <laughs> for three generic and a black, it has assist, so you're- anyone can help you pay for the three part. It's a 2-2. Two -two. It's a human rogue. Uh, pay two. <laughs> Fan favorite gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability, because it's a <laughs> fan favorite. <laughs> Pathetic. I've heard more noise in a monastery. Let me hear you, Valor's Reach. Yes. It is silly. I love it. I love it. It's so dumb. It's it probably not going to be silly. all that useful, but I love it. I was I was hoping that you would uh you do something with that one. I was like, this one is silly. It's I've, so silly. I've got another silly one that I kind of want to do if if you're okay with it. You know, I mean, unless it. unless you have another card. No, I was going to like point out just like uh there's some more Azra in there. I mean, yeah, we can Azra. keep going down, but just there's another card immediately after this that I'm wanted to talk about. Go for it. Okay. Uh Inner Demon because it's just sweet. For it two is pretty sweet. for two generic and two black, it's enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and has flying and is a demon in addition to other types. Whenever inner demon enters the battlefield, all non-demon creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn. It's it functionally could be a halfway decent board wipe on top of just hey now my dude's a demon and is also flying and is going to hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. I just like it. It's cool. It's pretty good. Um, do you want to take that, uh, the next Azura? Because it is a rare. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what yeah. it does. I didn't actually read to see what it does. That's okay. So this is Mind Blade Render. Ooh, those finger claws are gnarly looking. Yeah. Uh, so for one generic and a black, this Azura Warrior is a 1-3. Whenever your opponents are dealt combat damage, if any of that damage was dealt by a warrior, you draw a card and you lose one life. So it seems like there's a pretty solid, like, Sort of Mardu, maybe Black White. Wait, which one? Yeah, I guess there's like a Black White Warrior deck. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. That was sort of like a secondary mechanic that appeared in. Um, uh, I've forgotten the name now. Tarkir. Tarkir's like Mardu, who were red, black, white, had like a a warrior theme running through them, as well as the Obzon to some extent. <clears throat> That's always a nice one, because we've had, like, knight and soldier themes, but warrior doesn't seem to get quite as much, I'm going to say fanfare. I guess because they're less professional. 
Yes. Mm. I'm scrolling down and I'm seeing more of like the Innistrad type horrors. Yeah, there's like a just a chunk of Innistrad yeah. stuff. Um, I think Stunning and Reversal, however, is a new card. What? Um, the next Mythic I'm going to grab because I think that's a new card. Uh, stunning what? Reversal for three generic and a black. It's an instant. Next time you would lose the game this turn, instead draw seven cards and your lo life total becomes one. Exile Stunning Reversal. Huh. But if you're dying by mill, I'm pretty sure this actually just double kills you, but okay. Yeah. Uh, the line between victory and defeat can be as slim as a razor's edge. Huh. Where did the lava come from? That does not look non-lethal. <laughs> you know, he could be able to pull himself up. With his fingertips? I pull guess. Up? Maybe, if you don't fall off first. Um, can I throw a card for you to read? Sure. Uh, Thrilling Encore. <laughs> for, I was actually, that was one of the cards. So that one and uh, the one next to it, to the okay. right, are ones. And I was like, oh, these might be kind of cool. Okay, I can throw uh, up the other one for you, too. Perfect. Uh, so Thrilling Encore is four generic and a black. It is an instant. Put onto the battlefield uh under your control all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn welcome to the winning team that's cool i also love that i that is the gob the goblins from this plane because the goblins from this plane have massive ears it almost looks like a fennec from behind the i ears think that like might be like sort of the point off. yeah oh well then i think i got that um the next one is just, I love the flavor text. Uh, Virtus's Maneuver. So for two generic and a black, this is a sorcery. For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend returns a creature card from their graveyard to your hand, uh, to their hand. Each foe sacrifices a creature they control. Brutality has never been so exquisite. Mm -hmm. That just, that, that's flavor text. It's just like, oh, that's nice. That's so nice. It's destructive as hell, but it's so beautiful. Okay, I'm going to throw up one real quick that I'm just like, this is totally a reprint, but I like that it's the only one of the psych... Actually, I did it come from a cycle? I think it sort of came from a cycle, but there was more than five. So back in original uh, Zendikar, there were these uh, quest enchantments that some of them were like format defining for a while. Like, uh, I don't remember what it was called, but it was something about the Pyromancer, where basically you were trying to play out as many spells as possible, because when it finally triggered, it doubled any burn spells, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just kind of silly, because it's not by no means one of the most powerful ones. For a black, quest for the Grave Lord. It's an enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, you may put a quest counter on quest for the Grave Lord. Remove three quest counters from Quest for the Gravelord and sacrifice it. Create a 5-5 black zombie giant creature token. That's just cool. I like it. It's creepy looking. Yeah, and it's in black, so you're probably going to have things dying anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Makes sense. Let's see here. So in red, we've already done all of these uh, partners. Do you want to take the Blade... Korvath, Chakram Slinger. Do you want to grab the Blade Slinger? He just looks kind of sweet. Or Blade uh, Seeker? Yeah, the Blade Seeker. Yeah. So this is the Azra Blade Seeker for two generic and a red. It is a 3-2 Azra Warrior. When Azra Blade Seeker enters the battlefield, each player your teammate, uh, each player on your team may discard a card. Then each player who discarded a card this way draws a card. Never get too attached to a weapon. You must allow a better one to find its way to you. Uh, up next. I'm, this is going to be another one of those ones where I'm just grabbing cards because they have amazing names. Because it's red. They're all going to have amazing names. We've got Bonus Round! For one generic and two red, it's a sorcery. Uh, rare, until the end of turn, whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that co player copies it and may choose a new target for the copy. One warning. It doesn't say teammate. It says player. So if a player say, lets you resolve this, and casts a counter spell, they could counter multiple things on the stack. So, just be aware of that downside. When the twin spell bonus round begins, the crowd rises to its feet in anticipation of incredible combinations. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's just wrestling. This is just a stipulation match. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's so dumb. 
Um, I'd like to cover a card just because it's another silly little card. Okay. Uh, Cheering Fanatic. I wasn't sure if you were going to do that one or the one in between the two. Uh, well, I mean, I did look at both of them. I'll take the other uh, one then because I think it's okay. also very silly. Cheering Fanatic. This is a, uh, this is for one generic and a red. This is a 2-2 goblin. Whenever a Cheering Fanatic attacks, choose a card name. Spells with the chosen name cost one generic less to cast this turn. Punch him, kick him, bite him, beat him, burn him all, and we'll defeat him. I love that basically, like, he's cheering for that one guy, and it makes him less expensive. <laughs> Pretty much. I just love, that's really good flavor. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I just really like that one. Then we've got Bull Rush Bruiser, which I'm assuredly just reading because the, the, the name is amazing. For three generic and a red, it's a creature Minotaur Warrior, 4-3. Whenever Bull Rush Bruiser attacks, if your team controls another warrior, hey look, it totally is a Mardu strategy, <clears throat> Bull Rush Bruiser gains first strike until end of turn, hell yes. There will always be a spot in Valor's Reach for headlong violence! Aw, perfect. Yay! Are there any other Minotaurs? I don't see any. I just I saw that one. don't think so yeah i think that might be the only minotaur but i don't yeah. believe we have the full spoiler yet so there mm. might be more at common okay <clears throat> um, um do you want to take uh so i think we forgot to mention that there's sort of like signature spells at for a bunch of the different pairs we've already read a couple of them because there was like the the one for the angel in white yeah, yeah, yeah i don't remember what the blue one was but you read the one for um uh Black. vitris and uh yep. gorm we've got yeah, one so here this... for the dragon and her partner and i've forgotten their names uh sylvia uh yeah corvath and sylvia so do you want to read mm -hmm. uh corvath's one sure so corvath's Fu fury for four generic and a red uh this is a sorcery for each player choose friend or foe each friend discards all cards from their hand then draws that many cards plus one corvath's fury deals damage to each foe equal to the number of cards in their hand. Nice. Yeah, that actually seems pretty sweet. Um, I like it. Let's see here. Um, I just want to point out the sweet armor on Najila, the Blade Blossom. Yeah, I think that's who I'm going to end up reading next. And cause... she's got pretty roses in her hair, too, to go with her beautiful armor. I love it. She's the, uh, oh, shoot, what's his Dainty name? Dainty and effective. No, there's a knight in Game of Thrones uh oh brielle no 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 i'm going for the guy who's like very flamboyantly gay i think his name oh, his Loris. title yeah Loris like the Renly. knight the knight of the Earth, not Renly. flowers no, sorry loris uh oh god what is it it's Martell. loris thank you but for I'm some reason i was thinking of renly but that's renly baratheon who was his lover yeah. and then died but it was uh his title was knight of the flowers right yes yeah okay uh Najila, blade, the Blade Blossom, for two generic and a red. Oh, she's another, like, pseudo uh, Wubird commander. So for two generic and a red, legendary creature, human warrior, she's a 3-2. Whenever a warrior attacks, you may have its controller create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token that's tapped and attacking. For Wuburg, tap all attacking creatures. They gain trample, lifelink, and haste until end of turn. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Activate this ability only once during combat. Holy balls, that's amazing. What? A badass. Seriously. Um, nice job, Najila. Yeah. You badass, you. And she's not that expensive to cast. No, she's not. Admittedly, that secondary ability is not going to yeah. be something you can act. You can really do unless you really will build around yeah. it. Especially in sealed. Ugh. But uh, she's still awesome. What do you want next? Um, hmm. There's one that I'm kind of curious about. So there's, uh, so Bold Weir Intimidator. Oh, this is a classic, um, Cow? this card okay, gets, let me, this card let gets me read repr the card. reprinted a lot. Well, here, I'm throwing it up. Okay. Yeah, this card so, gets reprinted very often because it's just good. So for five generic and two red, uh, this is a giant warrior for five, five. Cowards can't block warriors. Uh, so for a red, target creature becomes a coward until end of turn. And then for two generic and a red, target creature becomes a warrior until end of turn. Yup. Nice. 
Nice. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to grab dude. Stadium Vendors for three generic and a red. It's a creature goblin. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for four. That's actually not that bad. I mean, for a, un, for a common goblin, yeah. When Stadium mm -hmm. Vendors enters the battlefield, choose a player. That player adds two mana of any color they choose. Nice. Flavor text is potions, mana potions, health potions, energy potions. Get your potions here. Perfect. I just like it. Sorry. The goblin. Um, I really like the look of the goblins in this set. Yeah, it looks like pretty much everything after. Oh, they're doing this thing again. Yeah, okay, so Which everything. One? Um, everything at, I didn't realize this initially as we were reading through everything after, um, uh, the stolen strategy is a uh, reprint. Hmm. Though, so if you scroll down, see if you can point out the, uh, Raymond Swan Leonard as we scroll down. Through yep. Red. Actually, I don't remember the last time this one was reprinted, but yes. Uh, do you want to read this one? Sure. So this is Goblin Raze Runners. So for two generic and two red, this is a three, four goblin warrior. For generic and a red, sacrifice the land. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Goblin Raise Runners. At the beginning of your end step, you may have... Oh, goodness. <sighs> the yawn has set goblin... in. The yawn set in. Have a Goblin Raise Runner deal damage equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it to target player or planeswalker. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. But nice. yeah, I think after that, it's pretty much just a, a series of eh, decent reprints. In, mm -hmm. Oh my god, they reprinted Shock. That's actually pretty nice. In uh, red, um, they're all pretty decent, honestly. Like, no complaints. Mm -hmm. They reprinted Magmatic me. Force. It's another one of those, like, originally in a Commander set cards. It's kind of expensive, and it's a big, big dude, but it's not bad. Um, let's see I here. mean, that, that, the, uh, the ability, I think, is kind of... Yeah, it helps with it as well. Yeah, but it, it's it's an interesting card, if nothing else. Um, I am going to throw up uh, the Bramble Sovereign because it looks sweet. Also, it's a Dryad, which I feel like we've been getting more and more of lately. Yeah. Did uh, we talk about... Oh, we did. We did talk about everyone so yeah. far. Yep. Okay. Uh, so Bramble Sovereign for uh, two generic and two green. It's a Mythic Rare Dryad. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you may pay one in a green. If you do, that creature's controller creates a token that's a copy of target creature. Nice. Yeah, within this grove, you belong to me. That is amazing. That's like, pretty great. That's really, like, especially in a two-headed giant game, that is amazing. Um. Okay. Like, that, that probably doesn't work anywhere besides two a giant probably not or anything else where you have an ally like you could maybe use this as a like politicking card and commander but even then that feels very dangerous um mm. what do you want to take next um i mean i see one of the like specific spells for the pairs uh, uh, yes, in fact, that is actually the last of the non-reprints for Green. Okay, so this is Peer's Whim. So for three generic and a green, this is a sorcery. Each uh, For each player, choose friend or foe. Each friend searches their library for a land card, puts it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffles their library. Each foe sacrifices an artifact or enchantment they control. Nope. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. See, I'm, really... I'm mostly confused by this because he looks to be an entirely different skin color in this art. Yeah, he really <laughs> does. Like, I it's think that is awful. a different child. I... Yeah, that's not quite. That's. Ugh. Yeah, that's Let's weird. Voltan um, boards did the art for that one. Who did the art for this one? Uh, someone Casper Takub Takub Casper, I think. So totally different artists than yeah. the other two peer cards. Yeah. Um, cards that have peer on them. So I'm going to then grab up uh, the weirdest card. Grotham All Devouring. So I think that's Grothama. Grothama? Sure. Grothama All Devouring. For three generic and two green, it's a mythic rare legendary creature worm. It's a 10-8. Oh, God, that, that's big. That's a bit inexpensive for a 10-8. Uh, 
I wonder what its downside could possibly be. Other creatures have, whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight Grothama all devouring. <laughs> when Grothama oh, no. leaves the battlefield, each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grothama this turn by sources they control. Okay, so it really balances itself out. Oh, yes, immediately. Like, unless you're basically able to have it enter the battlefield and immediately attack by giving it haste somehow, it's basically yeah. just a, like, you have to kill me, and if you do, you get a bonus for killing me. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be good or not, but still. I don't know. Or if you have something where you can essentially get rid of everybody else's creatures... Um, and oh, yeah, just, like, him. wipe the board, then play him. That would also mm -hmm. be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any more of these, like, non-marine prints you want? Because there's a couple that I feel like we should probably talk about. Mm, Beast Within looks useful. No, 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 no. Everything oh. after the oh, whim sorry. is a reprint. Um, let's see. I mean, Charging Binox is helpful. Okay, what does it do? Uh, so I'll take that one. So for seven generic and a green, this is a beast that is a seven five. Uh, it's got assist for that seven generic, and it's got trample. <laughs> Arena beasts are bred for flashiness and foul temper. An extra head addresses both requirements. He won't let me sleep. I just imagine that's how it gets so angry, is that one of them tries to sleep and the other one keeps waking it up. Yeah. I could okay. see that happening. So um, I'm going to grab then. The crowd goes wild. I left that one to you. I was like, oh, okay, he gets this one. Okay. Silly, silly. I was expecting you to try and take then like uh, the generous patron or something. Yeah. Um, uh, for... Which I, it, I already have in my brain is make it rain. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. For X and a green, it is a sorcery with assist, which means that anyone can pay the X or add to the X. Mm -hmm. uh, support X. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to target X creatures. Each creature with a plus one, plus one counter on it gains trample Ooh. until end of turn. It's this set's overrun variant, which we haven't actually had in a while, which I love. This is so nice. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Do you want generous patron just, then? Like, uh, imagine just combining your mana to tap to use this card and it becomes massive. Well, that's the thing is that this one actually doesn't do that much if it's massive because I don't believe you can target the same creature more than once. Yeah. Um, also, uh, it occurs to me, I think I lied when I said support was uh, the Obzon, like, historical mechanic. Now I'm thinking that, I think support was in Oath of the Gatewatch. I'm trying to remember what the old Obzon mechanic was then. Because it, it, <laughs> It the one that I'm thinking of for Obzon checked uh Jesus checked uh power and put it on the lowest power dude, I think. I don't remember. I don't know. Um generous patron. So two generic and a green, this is an elf advisor for one four. When generous patron enters the battlefield, support two. So put a one one counter on each of up to two other target creatures. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, draw a card. Make it rain! Yep. All them 1-1 one, one counters. So. Um, like we yeah. said, they were, they're were they reprinting Doubling Season. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure most of these like green cards are just all fine. Hey, they're reprinting Giant Growth. For anyone who has never played with that, uh, for a very long time, it was one of the only cards that had been printed in every single core set. It's oh, God, one green, it? give target creature, plus three, plus three. Um, I had a deck where I used this on a Bayloth. I mean... A couple Bayloths over and over to make them big. I th Miriam, that's what you do with that card. Yeah, I know. It was great. <laughs> I know, um, it was part of that this, this green-white deck that I made. Uh, so... I don't deck build that often, so when I do build a deck that is actually effective, I feel very proud of myself. Okay, so scrolling so. down to uh, Multicolored, everything after Vampire Charm Seeker is a reprint. Mm -hmm. So do you want to take the, uh, the Archon? Sure, so this is Archon of Valor's Reach. Uh, for four generic, a green and a white, this uh, Archon 
uh, is a 5-6. It has fl Flying, Vigilance, and Trample. As Archon of Valor's Reach enters the battlefield, choose Artifact, Enchantment, Instant Sorcerer, or Planeswalker. Players can't cast spells of the chosen type. You can't do anything except put land down. No, no, no. Chosen type. Yeah. So only yes, one of those. It's not you all can. of them. It's just yes. one of them. Yes. So yes, you can still play everything else. But it's still <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, last one. St wait, is it players? Yeah. So you can't as well. Yeah. That that's going to be the hard part. Oh boo! I thought it was just player. No, all players, not even opponents. Um, players can't. Dang. Okay. So you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. Oh yeah. I mean, assuming it, the assumption is that you pick the one that you that affects you and your teammate the least and hopefully mm -hmm. affects your opponent the most. Um, the next one I'm going to take, because it's actually just a Hearthstone card. Um, last one standing for one generic, a black and a red is a sorcery. Choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. Some train all their lives for a shot at the title. See? Wrestling. Some just get really, really lucky. Again, wrestling. It's like dodgeball. Makes um, me think of dodgeball. The if weird, you hide long enough, you can survive. The weird thing here is that this also is a card that someone submitted in the Great Designer Search, which is still ongoing. And for some reason, all of the comments about it are really negative. Basically about it just not being a good card or like bad design space the thing being that this card was already designed and therefore existed and probably had already been printed by the time that the great designer search started so all of the designers that are commenting on it saying it's bad to be fair the person who made it also made it cost one more than this mm -hmm. uh it's just, it's just like you all know that you printed this card but better and you're saying that it needs to cost more admittedly a bunch of their also a bunch of their criticisms criticisms were also just oh this would never work in standard for a question that it's like you never said that this had to be in standard but okay um huh. but the reason why i grabbed this is because this is actually just a hearthstone card like this is from the classic hearthstone set it's called brawl and it costs five because board wipes are much rarer in uh, Hearthstone, but it does exactly the same thing. You A creature gets determined at random, everything else dies. Hmm. Um, do you want to try to take the Odds Maker? Sure. This is the Azra Odds Maker. So for a generic, a black and a red, this is a 3-3 three, three Azra Warrior. At the beginning of, a co of combat on your turn, you may discard a card. If you do, choose a creature. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player this turn, you draw two cards. Oh my god. Oh, excuse me. I never give odds on my own fights, unless, of course, you want to bet against me. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, this other one is just a bit silly, but hey, I mean, they've got a warrior deck that they're mm -hmm. clearly trying to push, so why not? Yes. Uh, we've got the Rushblade Commander. Black and a red. It's an Osra warrior. Warriors on your team. Oh, warriors your team controls. Have haste. Nice. It's a 2-2. Two -two. I like quick victory. More time to celebrate. Always good. Um, last one. Vampire Charm Seeker. So for six generic, a blue and a black. This creature has a cyst. Uh, this is a 3-4 vampire wizard. Uh, it's got flying. When Vampire Charm Seeker enters the battlefield, return target instant sorcery or creature card from a graveyard to its owner's hand. Nice. Yeah, yeah, just decent. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I just wanted to go check down in the... I know that there's at least a couple of... Oh, there are two. There are two artifacts that are new to this set. Hmm. Everything else is a reprint. Uh, well, it's the first two. Yeah. Is there one that you would prefer over the other? I'd prefer to do victory chimes. Okay, that's sort of what I was assuming. Here are your victory chimes. Okay. So, for three generic, this is an artifact. Uh, untap victory chimes during each uh, other player's untap step. Uh, so, you tap at a player of your choice adds whatever color mana. Correct? No, that is colorless. 
colorless mana, excuse me. Uh, a favored noisemaker of goblins ever since the wardens cracked down on explosives. Oh, so they are still totally goblins. Good. Makes sense. Yes. Look at their little <laughs> burning eyes. Those are creepy. Oh, God, they are. That's terrifying. Like, um, <laughs> those are like monster under the bed nightmare goblins. Yeah. So then we've explosives. got Sentinel Tower. For four, it is an artifact. Whenever an instant or sorcery is cast during your turn, Sentinel Tower deals damage to any target equal to one plus the number of instant or sorcery spells cast this turn before the spell, before that spell this turn. So basically, no, you may not storm deck. No. <laughs> the built-in obstacle obstacles force competitors to think three moves ahead. Like, hmm. yeah, this actually just says, no, you are not allowed to storm off. Although, oh, any target. Yeah. So, yes, it's basically just, if you storm off, this will kill you. Nice. Because this this thing's triggered effect will go on top of whatever your theoretical final storm card will be. And it will nice. go and kill you first. I love it. This is probably going to be a legitimately legacy playable sideboard card. Just as, like, a way to counter, uh, like, the, um, the, what is it, Ant and Tess storm decks. Though I don't know how much they need to storm off to function. But if it's more than 20 cards, or you could get them low enough, this is probably going to be a legitimately playable card in Legacy. <laughs> nice. Um, the only I, thing... You know, I know that they've reprinted a pretty much all of the artifacts, but there's some good artifacts in here. Oh, yeah, they're all, like, fine artifacts. Yeah. Because it's, like, Juggernaut, or... I mean, Hexblade Gole Golem is actually kind of boring, but, like, Goldforge Sentinel is cool. Eager Construct is amazing Kaladesh design. Mm -hmm. I love a good... You know I've got a soft spot for Kaladesh. Yeah. And it's art. It's so pretty. Uh, Consulate Skygate's pretty sweet. Um, the weird Peace and Pierce Striders from... Uh, uh, not scars of what is it? Battle? No, God, what is it called? It's in between, um, scars of Mirrodin. Oh, it's Mirrodin Besiege. They're both from Mirrodin Besiege. That was it. Mm -hmm. Um, spectral searchlight. I remember being kind of decent, but I can't remember. Oh, right, it was from uh one of the Ravnica sets. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize Seer's Lantern, but. Tyrant's Machine. That's probably a bit old for even me. Oh, goodness. There's even a y Yodian soldier here. Back from what that... Is this? What, the Yodian soldier? Yeah, I was wondering, like, what set is that from? It was from a weird time where uh, there were... They did this weird thing where they sort of rebrand... Uh, tried to do a rebranding of a whole bunch of the different creature types. So mm -hmm. White got the creature type of soldier... But they didn't have a race attached, so they were just soldiers. Mm -hmm. So they, they also became this, like, weird, shapeless, uh, indistinct race where they didn't really have, like, faces or any sort of distinctive features. They were just okay. soldiers. That same... I don't remember what the set was, but that same set also put wizards as a race. So they were basically, like, humans with weird tentacly heads. Hmm. And were the primary blue uh, creature type for a while. It it was very strange, and I don't remember the set. Um, that's why, to this day, a lot of soldier tokens don't get, like, human soldier token. They're just soldiers. It's, it's very weird. That's kind of part of why they stopped doing soldiers as much. And they started doing things like human knights and human warriors. Um, I mean, then we should also say that there's land. They did the same styles, the bat, or no, sorry. I keep thinking it's the same styles, the battle lands, because I read them wrong. Um, they all enter the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. So they work great in commander. They work great in any sort of multiplayer format. They just suck in anything that's not multiplayer. And they're all the allied colors. So there's a green, white, a white, blue, a uh, blue, black, a black, red, and a red, green. Okay. Yeah, nothing Let's special see. about them. They're just actually pretty sweet. Yeah. Also, um... they give a little bit of flavor text about the about Valor's Reach. Apparently, like, 
mages literally remake it all the time, so it's never the same. Yeah, I kind of got that impression just from, like... So, uh, I the... think, so, if, for example, if you look at the... Yeah, there were a couple of cards that make it sound like it's reshaped by itself, but, um... Literally, just look that, at like, the, the, the basic lands. Yeah. It's all the same place, but all just, like, different... Oh, no, no. So, here's the thing. I got that it changed. Morphic Pool yeah. specifically says that people remake it. Mm, okay. Or, no, sorry. No, they don't. Sorry, I thought it said Ancient Mages. Ancient Magic. The thing reshapes itself. Like, what? no, no one controls it. It's basically just, it does this because it wants to be entertaining. Someone, in the same way that... Uh, a bunch of mad people a long time ago came up with the guild pack to, like, order and control Dominaria. Mm -hmm. Some bunch of mad people apparently created Valor's Reach in a way that it's semi-sentient magic and just remakes itself constantly. Ha! Yeah. Also, apparently, this entire plane is connected by sky bridges. That's just... kind of cool. Yeah. I mean... Sky, br pretty. Sky bridges from across Kylem converge at the Grand Stadium of Valor's Reach, which I assume means that there are smaller stadiums too. Maybe. Um, I feel like this would be a really interesting plane to get more information on. Hopefully, we will, but we'll yeah. have to wait and see. Yeah. But yeah, so... I think that's pretty much it. I again, I'm not 100 percent sure if we have all of the cards. I feel like we can't... Po oh, God, I forgot that they, they're... We may actually have all the cards because they're, they are doing this... They do this strange thing whenever they reprint... Um, uh, whenever they do sets that have some new cards and a whole bunch of reprints, where mm -hmm. they... Uh, they even do the collector's numbers really strangely, where the collector's numbers for everything that's not a reprint all come first, and then they reset. So it goes... Uh, white, blue, black, red, green. So normally it goes white, blue, black, red, green, multicolored artifact land. But in this case, it goes white, blue, black, green, red, multicolored land, not reprints, and then starts back up at the beginning and goes white, blue, black, green, blah, 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 reprints. So the collector's numbers are all sorts of deeply confusing. But I think we may actually have all of the cards by now. I guess all it just that. feels like there aren't that many commons but maybe i'm just hallucinating but yeah i guess it looks like we may have all of them mm -hmm. still i mean everything about this set looks sweet it really does look like a, a fun set oh yeah i'm i'm hoping that we do end up doing the uh maybe going to one event or getting some of the cards to play with yeah just because i feel like it'd be fun to play through and i know alex and i tend to enjoy doing two-headed giant or something similar like that together yeah it's and hopefully fun. Haley and i will manage to as well i just don't know yeah but yeah this looks really sweet i i wish that this is the sort of thing that they could bring to arena but i kind of doubt it Mhm. Mm but mm, i can hope but uh would you say we're good for today yeah i think i think, I think we're pretty good for today yeah um just a reminder that we are going to be... Ugh. Sorry. Ugh. Stretching. Ugh. You can fuck... Hey, no, I'm yawning. God damn it. I'm Ugh. sorry. I think I, I shared that one. Yeah, I think you did. So, uh... Um... You can find everything that we do over at LayerOfLore.com You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I am at Twitter at LayerOfLore. Miriam. And I'm on Twitter at Madcap Mim. <laughs> Easy to find. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's a theme to where you can find us. Yes. The naming, our naming conventions. Yes, we're also on Facebook at Lair of Lore. Uh, we are also on Twitch at Lair of Lore. So we stream a whole heck of a lot. Maybe come stop by. You will find assuredly something that interests you because we stream a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, like From later today. Good eating Sims. Yeah. Later today, I believe Haley is hoping to stream some, uh, I've forgotten the name, Stardew Valley. And after that, I'm going to be doing Pokemon. Yay! Because we do a uh, Pokemon Nuzlocke stream every Monday and Tuesday. And occasionally on other days if I have to make up uh, for a Pokemon stream being short. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and uh, Fridays, or excuse me, Saturdays are going to be fun stuff in the future. And right now it's just been Monster Prom because we're all having so much fun with Monster Prom. Yup. Anyway, I think with that, we are pretty much ready to head out. Thank you all so mm -hmm. very much for tuning in. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. We forgot to mention Patreon because we're done. Patreon. Oh, my God. Yes. Wow. You can also find our Patreon where you can choose to support us if you really enjoy doing that. Uh, you can get access to stuff like the Menagerie of the Lair, where you can get basically silly pictures of our cat and dogs being very, very stupid and dumb because they are very good at that. You can also There's get access to uh, all of our VODs and this podcast early, as well as our pre and post show, which is how we remembered this. <laughs> Uh, as well as a couple okay, of extra yeah. bits. And you can get your name called out at the very end of everything that we do, like our painters in the lair right now. That's just Stark Maximum. Thank you very much, buddy. Thank uh, you so but yeah. much, dude. With that, we'll actually be gone. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye for reals.